Hello everyone, Nebeka here. Welcome to this next episode of Let's Play Judgment. So, we are in a flashback to uh, Yagami's slightly younger days. And um, we are investigating Waku-san's room, who is uh, the first victim of... I forgot his name. The dude that Yagami defended and got acquitted. So, I guess we're going to find out some truths. Perhaps. Hmm. You can definitely see what's going on from out here. Shintani Sensei, can you lay on the bed for me? Uh, I guess so. Here to join me, Terasawa-san? What do you got to lose? <laughs> He's such a creep. <laughs> Ignored. So from this vantage point, you can't make out the person's face. Okay. So, was this the colossal waste of time I knew it'd be? Nope. I got something I'd only get from being here. Does it matter? It's been days. Case is practically closed. Shinpei Okubo is guilty as hell. Well, according to him, he's not. Well, of course, that's what he says. Consider the facts, though, man. You want to review the case? Always. Sure. Let's go over what we know so far. Whatever you want. All right. Here we go. Our victim was the patient staying in this room. Koichi Waku. Male. Age 66. At 8.30 a.m. on the morning of the crime, the nurses noticed he was missing from his bed. Given Waku's degenerative state, they assumed he was wandering around the hospital somewhere. But after being unable to track him down, hospital staff filed a missing persons report. Right. You know what a dementia patient's like, though. Hard to imagine they'd make it outside on their own. The only conclusion, then, was that somebody must have taken him out of the hospital. After inspecting all the cars that came in and out of the center, they were left with one possible suspect. A laundry man by the name of Shinpei Okubo. It didn't take much prodding for Okubo to confess burying Waku's body out in the mountains. And lo and behold, three months after Waku disappeared, the cops found his body rotting away right where Okubo said it'd be. Cause of death was most likely suffocation, but they still don't know for sure. Any objections to this so far, Yagami-sensei? Actually, yeah. You're forgetting something. And what's that? Okubo-kun insists he didn't kill anyone. All he admits to is dumping the body. You can't say for sure that the guy who dumped the body actually committed the murder. Yep, that's true. If I budge on that, I'd be admitting Okuboku'n did it before the trial even started. Oh, sure. But come on, Yagami. The guy's got a history of assault, and it's on record. Roughed up his girlfriend, accidentally broke her finger. Right, but that was over six years ago. He was just a kid. Got drunk, made a huge mistake. And what? It's okay for a kid to hit a woman? Of course not. But that's not what he's on trial for. True. I don't condone what he did. But legally, committing one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of another. Fine. But what about Okubo's shaky alibi? He said he left the center at 10 a.m. after grabbing the sheets from the general war. Claimed Wakusan's corpse somehow got loaded into his truck. <laughs> Who's gonna believe garbage like that? Well, if anyone should, it's his lawyers. So, <laughs> we're meeting with Okubo after this, right? You should just be honest with him. Tell him the case is unwinnable. Are you two done here? Yep. Can you show us the garage next? The one where Okubo-kun parked his truck. The service entrance, I think it was. That's the only other place we'll need to see today. Hmm. 
We'll need to take an elevator down there. Follow me. Lead the way. Follow me. <laughs> He's so aloof, Shintani. He just wants an easy case. Wait, and did I pass the elevator already? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Come on, girl. Keep up. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, I guess the wrong elevator. My bad. It's okay, I'll catch up to her in no time. So I wonder if if he really did do it. Oh, it's a big elevator. Hey, Yagami, you're never gonna last if you keep taking cases like this. Criminal suits are a constant test of your conviction, your sense of justice. They don't even pay that well. Careful who you say that around. Look, just chill out, okay? Take it from me. I've been around the block way longer than you have. Ah, looks like a regular old garage to me. Hmm. You'd make it out with no problem if you put a body into your truck down here. It's quiet. It is. Hey, Yagami. Check this out. These are the carts they use to collect sheets and linens. Day of the crime, Okubo was all over the hospital with one of these things. It would have been simple for him to sneak a body in there and cart it right out. Maybe so. Well, where was Okubo parked on the day of the incident? Oh, um... I don't know why, but I'm really suspicious of this nurse. I don't know why. The truck was parked here, with the back facing the elevator. Here's a recreation of it. I see. Hmm. DNA evidence from the victim was found in the flatbed of the truck. That's proof enough that the body was there. And when they confronted Okubo, he flat out admitted it. Okay, maybe he was forced to take him? I don't know where they want us to go. Let's see. Nope, can't go that way. There was evidence that the body was in Okubo's truck. Mm-hmm. Oh, talk to the nurse then. When was Wakusan last seen? Just before 8 a.m. on the day of the crime. Yeah, 7.50 to be precise. An ADDC scientist will be testifying to that. He claims he saw him nice and cozy in his bed. I see. Can we talk to this witness? I tried to get an appointment, but they shut me down. Said they don't want us interfering with their research anymore. They're not willing to make an exception this once? This isn't an issue you want to push, Yagami. Worst case scenario, you get charged with witness intimidation. All right, all right. Anyway, the victim was last seen at 7.50. That's right. Breakfast is at 8 o'clock, so the patients who can walk on their own gather in the break room. But on the day of his disappearance, 8.30 came and went with no sign of Wakusan. You thought you'd find him quickly. Didn't exactly turn out that way. Right. Got that, Yagami? Here, let's go over some more details. Sure, let's hear what the great Shintani Sensei has to say. What we know is, Waku was taken out of his room sometime between 7.50 when he was last seen, and 8.30 when everyone noticed he was gone. During that 40 minute span, Somebody suffocated Waku and stuffed him into the laundry bin. Nobody suspected there was a body in the cart. 
and the only clear culprit was Okubo, the man in charge of the laundry. To further back this up, DNA evidence from Waku was found in Okubo's truck. Then when the police questioned Okubo, he confessed to burying the body in the mountains of Okutama. Three months after the crime, Waku's corpse was finally found. With me? This thing's airtight, Yagami. I know you're getting into this, but come on. Just give it up already. You don't have a chance. Even though Okubo says he's innocent, I promised him we'd do everything we could. Not my problem. You shouldn't make promises you can't keep. <sighs> Fine, then I'll do it alone. You don't have to be involved. Even if I'm not, the loss will hurt Genda Sensei's reputation. I'm sorry, but our client says he's innocent. I can't back down from this. Ah, fine. I'll be in the lobby. See, something's up with that nurse. She knows something. Um, if you like. I could take you to see Wakasan's room again. You don't mind? Oh, that would be great. I mean, yeah, that story could have happened, but other stuff could have happened too. Like me, I, like I'm thinking the last witness, that scientist who doesn't want to be bothered. It could have been him that killed Wakusan, and put him in Okubo's basket without Okubo knowing. And then maybe later on, once this, once Okubo discovered the body, the scientist like threatens him to just go bury him or he'll die too. Like, I don't know. There's so many things can happen. I don't know how Shintani can say it's airtight. It's not. Here I am again. Don't really see anything out of the ordinary though. Yeah, let's talk to her. Do we examine this again? Wakasan was here until the morning of the incident. Then he just up and disappeared. That's right. I wonder how well you can see in here from the hallway. Um, are you finished? Not yet. I don't think there's anything else I can examine in here, right? The window sealed shut. There's no way Wakasan could have escaped through here. Okay. Okay, guess that's um. it. Yeah, I've seen what I need. Anything else you can share? Hmm. How long will Okubo-san's sentence be? If he's found guilty, that is. Probably ten years, maybe more. It's hard to say for sure. And what if he confesses? Would they shorten his sentence? Well, at the very least, it'd make a better impression than insisting he didn't do it. But you're still going to push an innocent plea? Even though Okubo-san is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. Terasawa-san, were you close to Okubo-kun? I spoke to him pretty often, yes. I would see him around the ward all the time. And what did you think of him? Did he seem like the kind of guy who'd do something like this? I'm sorry. The director told us not to say too much. Wait! If you know anything that can help, just get in touch, okay? I'll do whatever it takes to set Okubo-kun free. But I can't do it alone. Just give it some thought, Terasawa-san. Hmm. Just now, 
He went to the ADDC. Thought I should have a look at things with my own eyes. And? How did it go? There's no chance you walk. You're practically a lost cause. Hey. Yagami-sensei, is that what you think? It's like this, Okubo. You tell me you're innocent, and I'll fight to the end. I really have nothing to lose by helping you out. It's just like I told you. Whoever did it is framing me. I want to believe I'm innocent until proven guilty. On the day of the crime, you were in the general war of the ADDC, yes? Starting at 8 a.m., you went around to each room and gathered the linens. Yes. Nobody would dispute that. And after that, you covered Wakusan's nose and mouth, suffocated him, and then carted him out in the laundry bin. That's not true. Wakusan wasn't there when I went into his room. I didn't see him at all that day. You have to believe me. And I do. So when you went down to leave the center at 10 a.m. after gathering the linens, you realized there was a body hidden in the truck. Yes. That's what happened. Then, after debating whether or not to report the body, you chose to hide it in the mountains. That's what I don't understand. Why would he choose to do that? That's going to be a huge hurdle to climb in the trial. Yeah, it is. Instead of reporting it, he went to go bury it. That's the only fishy part. I had a criminal assault on my record. I knew the police would have suspected me if I went to them. Aren't you forgetting the bad blood you had with Wakusan? Huh? Bad blood? What are you talking about? Three days before the murder, Wakusan claimed Okubo-kun here punched him and stole his wallet. They told me all about it at the center. When did you even ask? While you were busy chatting up Terasawa-chan. <laughs> even if I bitch about it, I'm still damn good at my job. Well, Okubo-kun, did you take his wallet or...? Not quite. They call it delusion of theft. It's a symptom of dementia. You think something's been stolen from you, then blame the first person you see. Not the easiest thing to deal with, right? Someone accuses you of theft for no reason? Must have been a shock. So when Wakusan tried to hit you, you just about hit him back. But I didn't hit him. No. You murdered him. I wouldn't kill a man over something like that. Ah. Uh. I wish I could believe you, pal. Come on, Okubo-kun. You got a record of violence. It wasn't me. I swear. Somebody set me up. Please, you have to believe me. Whoever did this is laughing at all of us right now. <sighs> Calm down. Yagami-sensei. Do you believe me? I do. Okay. The next time, come alone. Fine. I can take a hint. You and Yagami Sensei can cuddle up all you want. Hey. You know that nurse, Terasawa san? Cute girl. It sounded like she was worried about you. Bet you'd have a chance with her once you get out of here. I don't know. If you'll excuse me. Terasawa is not the one that dies later, right? Like the second uh, alleged Okubo murder? Oh god, I hope not. I don't remember. I want to believe him. I do. And Shintani is such a horrible lawyer. <laughs> He's lucky to have Yagami on his side. So Shintani just left you hanging, huh? He's gotta learn some damn patience. 
Maybe so. But this is my case now. I can handle it myself. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Guess we're still doing the flashback. Yagami-san. Hmm? Have you seen Mafia lately? Well, where's this coming from? She's just not that great with men. I suggest you be more assertive. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you mean that friend of yours, Sarikun? She's got Shintani all riled up. Said he'd have been nicer to you if he knew you had friends who looked like her. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> hey, nothing's official yet, guys. Regardless, keep it on the down low, okay? Yet? That word says more than you think. <laughs> it really does. Oh, okay, let's go back to Kenda. Mafia Kuhn's a prosecutor, right? Isn't it kind of taboo for her to date a defense attorney? Can we not do this? Either way, guess the Okobo case comes first. Pleading innocent, yeah? That's the plan. What is your plan here? This isn't gonna be an easy win. Well, I'm working on that. There's one piece of evidence that still bothers me. Yeah? And what's that? What should I focus on if I want to prove Okobo innocent? That would be... You, da, 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 his pillow. Da, 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 da. I want to say this. No. I don't know. There's a piece of it I should focus on if I want to find Kobo. I guess this. Or stay for two years, however he does. I don't know. I'm just gonna say this one. The DNA sample they found from Wakusan. It was in the flatbed of the truck Okubo kun used for work. Right. That's why they went after Okubo in the first place. As for Wakusan's body, it was hidden in the pile of sheets that had been loaded into the truck. He said he noticed it when he was just about to leave the ADDC. And then he panicked and buried the body in the mountains of Okutama. As I've seen, he's admitted to that much at least, right? Yes, but he insists he didn't commit the murder. Maybe so, but you're gonna need evidence if you want to prove it. Did we get anything else from that truck? Like, maybe a DNA sample from the actual killer? No, nothing like that. Well, that's a shame. Well, that's not my point, though. The evidence I showed you is... That evidence won't win you the case. What the hell's your problem? Hmm? Was that Shintani? I think so. Get back here! <laughs> Whoa. <gasps> what the uh, hell? That bastard. Oh, was eavesdropping on you. What the hell? Uh, I tried to stop him, but uh, he pulled a stun gun on me. Uh, Let's go get him. Hey. Up. It's it's Terasawa. I can recognize her. Let's go. It's totally Terasawa. Hold up. What is she doing? Oh, come, oh, come on. You know ye she ain't. Oops. <laughs> Maybe she will. Gosh darn it. Come on, come on. Hold up. All because of one frickin' sign. Oh! Almost missed that. Whoa! <laughs> Ow. 
Come on, girl. Did we catch her? <laughs> yeah, it's totally her, but why is she doing this? A woman. Help! Someone help me! Aren't you Terasawa san? Let me go! Uh oh. We got a groper out here? Scum of the earth! Had to sneak in a fight somehow. <laughs> Not on my watch, you son of a bitch! At least they mean well this time. <laughs> I'll take this. Thank you. No, don't mind if. Whoa. Don't mind if I take this. My favorite toy. Bitch. Come on now. <laughs> All right. I like how she stayed there instead of running away. Good girl. Can all lawyers fight like that? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Give us the dirt, Terasawa son. Did you really need to run away like that? I assume you came to see me. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, yes. But I wasn't sure if I should. Then that pig-headed friend of yours started shouting, so I just lost it. Okay, but did you have to tase him? Not that he didn't have it coming. Anyway, I'm listening if you want to talk. No matter what it is, I'll keep your secret. Anything you tell me will fall under client attorney privilege. Well, you know the witness who last saw Wakusan? Said he saw him sleeping in his bed. Uh huh. Well, that witness is a man by the name of Shonosan. He's one of the scientists at the ADDC. Not only that, but he's the director's right hand man, too. This is him? Yes. He's a very dedicated doctor, so the nurses have a lot of faith in him. But something felt off when I heard what he had to say about the incident. And what's that? I guess I'm just skeptical as to whether or not he actually saw Wakusan. I don't think he's intentionally deceiving us, but he may be mistaken somehow. And if I had to guess, I'd say the other nurses feel the same. Still, why hasn't anyone mentioned this until now? How could we? Nurses talking about a doctor behind his back? That's not something a nurse could do without consequences. And if it came to a courtroom testimony... None of you would testify? Maybe the other nurses wouldn't, but I would. I never really fit in over there anyway. Besides... Yeah? I think Okubo-san is innocent. Oh, really? Sounds like I've finally got an ally on my team. Oh, I don't know if she's the one that died. If she's Okubo's girlfriend later. So then they probably framed him for that too. They probably killed her for testifying. These scientist dudes. Oh my gosh. 
I'm currently employed as a researcher at the Advanced Drug Development Center. Part of our research consists of clinical tests we perform on patients in the general ward of the center. On the day of the crime, I was making my usual rounds through the ward. And what time was that? Around 7.50. You're sure? Yes. The patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you passed by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Wakusan lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. He could have been dead already though, not asleep. <gasps> Yagami-sensei. Why did you call her to the stand? She actually asked to testify. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Here's my chance for a comeback. Terasawa-san, you were present for Shono-san's testimony just now, yes? Yes. And what is your opinion on that testimony? For a scientist, I felt his wording was rather imprecise. And as a medical professional, I felt his actions were negligent. Damn, shots fired. Could I ask you to be a little more specific? Our witness, Shono-san, claims he saw Waku-san sleeping in his bed during his morning rounds. However, there's no way he could have known that just by looking in from the hallway. Because his face was covered. supporting Terasawa-san's testimony. Shona shouldn't have been able to see Waku. I have evidence to prove that, right? The little window. This. Please look at this. It's a photograph of the victim's room as viewed from the hallway. In other words, this is what Shona-san would have seen when he checked in on Waku-san. And this evidence points to this fact. The culprit was hiding in the hospital room. The victim was already dead. Shono's testimony was a lie. The culprit is Shono, who claims to be a witness. Oh my goodness. Uh, I want to say this one. But there's no way to prove that either, that he was dead already. He was not... Oh, yeah. this It's a lie. Shono-san was lying when he said he saw Waku-san in the bed. Excuse me? Nope, what that's not true. What he saw the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Wakusan. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Wakusan? The staff nurses are trained to always enter a room when checking in on a patient. In Wakusan's case, it's impossible to tell anything just by looking in from the hallway. There was actually one time a while back where we thought he was under the covers. Only to find Wakusan eating in the break room a second later. And upon re examining the room, we realized that we had mistaken a bunched up pillow for Wakusan. The witness makes an important distinction. The prosecution asserts that Shonosan's testimony is clear that the victim was taken out of his room at some point between 7 50 and 8 30 in the morning. They claim that because of this time frame, the defendant must have smuggled Wakusan's body out in his laundry bin. 
That's why Okoboku-kun was assumed to be the only person who could have killed Waku-san. But if Shono-san's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Waku-san was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. In other words, the defense establishes that there is reasonable doubt that Okubo-san is the killer, rendering the prosecution's central argument unsound. Your Honor, taking this new testimony into account, I'd like to call Shono-san back to the stand for cross-examination. Woo! <laughs> go Yagami! Yeah! Or go us? Shono-san. Yes? Let's see how Shona responds with that evidence and Terasawa-san's testimony out in the open. I'll get right to the point. On the day of the crime, what did you see when you looked into Waku-san's room? I saw Waku-san asleep in his bed, I think. I think. And did you get a clear look at his face? I don't remember. Hmm? So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Waku-san in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Waku-san's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase the question. Shono-san, can you say without a doubt that Waku-san was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I, I don't think I can, no. Nice. Then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The prosecution's argument has fallen apart. Not to go in for the kill. The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect, assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shono-san's testimony is unreliable, establishing reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest that that you withdraw the charges against my client. Woo. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So, your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <sighs> because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title, not his testimony today. Damn, Yagami. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Uh-oh, he's gonna bring up Okubo's record. Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the poor old. Oh. Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session. What is she doing? Terasawa-san? Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. My court will not stand for this commotion. 
He didn't blame Wakusan at all. He knew that the outburst was just caused by his dementia. That it was all the sickness's fault. So there was no reason for him to resort to murder. Terasawa-san, please. Okubo-san really is an incredible, caring person. Please leave this courtroom at once. You're right that he may be hard to approach, but he's a kind soul, and he always keeps his promises. Okubo-san's not the only person in this courtroom who would be affected by a guilty verdict, either. As a matter of fact, it would break my heart. And even through it all, he wanted me to keep this a secret, not to tell anyone, not even his lawyer, that we were dating. Even though he knew he could have ended up in prison, making sure I was safe was the only thing in the world he cared about. That's just who he is. But when the prosecution has already decided he's a criminal, how could he possibly be given a fair trial? <sighs> oh, goodness. Her little outburst wasn't technically admissible. But as the trial dragged on, it hung over the jury like a stone. And in the end, Shinpei Okubo was found not guilty. But only a month after his release, everything changed. Yeah, she died. Great. It was her. The same girl who had so bravely proclaimed Okubo's innocence died by the man's own hand. How? Why? I don't think so. I think he was framed again. Something wrong? No, it's nothing, Vice Minister. But... I haven't seen you in about three years, Kido-san. I see you're still the director. You look familiar, but I can't quite place the name. I seem to recall you looking sharper. <laughs> I'm a detective based in Kamurocho now. The name's Yagami. Ah, I remember now. You're the reason Terasawa-kun's no longer with us. I'm sure you're the Remember reason Shono? why. Okubo-san was unstoppable. If only my testimony had been better. Shono-san, right? Does it matter? What brings you here anyway? I'm investigating a murder. And I'll need your cooperation with it. Just like old times. Oh, man. Yes, I see. Yes, thank you. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. The same Shono-san you were just with? Why would Shintani call Shono? Yes, however, it's unclear as to what the point of the call was meant to be. Shono was away from his desk at the time, you see, and Shintani-san didn't leave a message. You have no idea what he wanted to talk about? None. Shono says he doesn't know a Shintani-san, and sees no reason why he would be calling. Oh, really? Shono and I co-authored the research paper on AD9. We're quite well known, as it turns out. Sometimes, complete strangers pretend to be close friends or relatives in order to contact us. Perhaps Shintani-san fell into that category. Have you heard of the mole murders taking place in Kamurocho, Dr. Kido? Three Yakuza, each one with their eyes gouged out. It's a grisly business. Shintani was killed in the same way. I've seen the news. Can you think of anything tying the ADDC to those murders? Huh? Look, just what are you implying? Look, I believe we're done here. There's nothing I can help you with. Please stop! You can't! 
Who are you? Detective Kuroiwa, Kamuro Police, Organized Crime. What is he doing here? One of your guests here has information related to the case I'm currently investigating. That would be you, Yagami. Hmm? I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintan. Is that so? Makes sense. Should have expected this. I did expect this. Thought he was in our home. <laughs> why Why wouldn't they suspect us? Anyways, whoo! That was crazy. The whole flashback was amazing. So well done. And finally, we get some insight as to what happened back then. I'm really sad that it was Terasawa that was the girlfriend that died in the beginning. But I don't think Okubo did it. I'm like Yagabi. Um, I'm really suspicious of the doctors here. Especially Dr. Kido. I think he... I think Shono is just a pawn used by Dr. Kido and whoever his boss is. I'm guessing they were trying to do AD9 and they experimented on Wakusan and he passed away accidentally and so they just tried to cover it up by making it look like a murder and pinning it on Okubo. Um, so I think that uh, Okubo is innocent and these research researcher guys are in on it. And since Terasawa-san went against her nurse's duty and went against them by testifying and pretty much acquitting Okubo, they had her killed <laughs> and made it look like Okubo did it. So, uh, yeah, they're trying to pin another murder on him. So, I don't know. These are just my theories, but... As far as the mole stuff going around, Shintani and the other Yakuza dying, maybe they're in on the in on that too, trying to frame Yagami. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a huge web that we're barely getting a little snippet of. Anyways, this was a very interesting episode flashback. I loved it. The main story is incredible and you forget how awesome the main story is because you get so sidetracked with the side cases and the friendships and so I'm glad like these last two episodes have just been main story because we're forced we were forced upon it if not I would have kept doing side stuff anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please give it a like comment below your thoughts share the video and subscribe to this channel for more episodes into the series until the next one you take a lot of care jenny